So we're talking about parenting this week, and I find myself um, writing in the cards of baby showers that I'm going to to first-time moms, you know, something to the effect of get ready for the most humbling journey in life other than marriage, I think, because I know that's how it's been for me. Um, I started out with a lot of pride and arrogance, I think, in my parenting. Kind of felt a lot like there was a formula that I was going to follow that was going to equal <laughs> perfect children or something. You know, you look at how your parents did things and it could be good or in between or bad and you want to tweak a few things and you kind of get it in your mind like if if I tweak just the right things I'm gonna get it perfect and then um, I'm gonna have amazing children and then God just cuts you off at the knees and humbles you and shows you your failures and um, your weaknesses and how much you need him in parenting because how many times do you have to cry out for wisdom on just an hour-by-hour hour basis to be able to to know what to say to your child or how to lead them. And um, you really have to know God. You have to be close to God so that you can speak truth into their life. And with kids, you can't like hide. They see all of you and they see whether or not you're in the Word and if you're living out what you say. And they're very quick to perceive um, hypocrisy or, you know, she's saying one thing but doing another. And so, parenting is just an, it's a big deal. Yeah, I, I know for me it was, it, like Lisa said, it, it's humbling and you, you you do things as parents that you just thought you would never do, like in a bad way. Like I remember even our oldest, I mean she wasn't even two years old and I remember just picking her up from her crib because she was just screaming, I remember just yelling at her like, I mean, it's it's embarrassing. Just just going, shut up. I just remember just screaming that in her face, and then putting her down in the crib and going, "What did I just? I, I just yelled at like this one and a half year old baby. Like, who who am I? Where, where's this anger coming from?" And I remember just going out in the living room and just going, "God, this isn't. I didn't even know that's in me. Like, how, how much like ugliness." Um, I remember when the second child, Mercy, was born. I, just, I still remember we were walking, we're strolling her, and she's just crying. And again, it's just that noise. It was just like, shut up. That's like my go-to word. Like, I, it, it just, and I'm going, what, have I not grown? You know, here, three, four years later, and it's embarrassing sometimes when you see your own anger, and then you see the faults in their lives, and. Um, in their character, and you realize, wow, that, that came from me. There's, there's just so much refining that takes place. And I don't know, it's just been like such a crazy journey. And like, like Lisa said, you realize then so much isn't even up to you because as you get refined and start growing, and then you can almost get arrogant, like, man, we're pretty good parents. These kids are gonna love the Lord. And um, you realize you don't even have control over that. Uh, biblically, that's in the Father's hands, and there's something that you can't make your kids fall in love with Jesus. There's that moment when that happens, if that happens, and that's largely dependent on the Lord, and I'm not going to get in that theological debate right now, but you do have to surrender and go, okay, Lord, I, I need your spirit to fall upon Rachel, on Mercy, on Ellie, on Zeke, on Claire, on whatever this one's gonna be. You know, just, I I need your help. Um, and it's almost like we don't treat our kids like, um, I don't know what to say, like, like, we, like we treat other Christians. Like sometimes, um, like when we're counseling other people, like we appeal to the Holy Spirit in them and, and think of them as just these human beings in need of a savior and sometimes when you're raising your kids, you almost feel like, no, I can just do this um, by my rules and by my parenting methods. And you don't treat them like Christians and, and uh, you, you don't treat them as people who are gonna be lights into the world. Um, it's almost like you're, well, at least for us ladies maybe, 
you're so emotionally attached and invested in it that you can't even remove yourself enough to be able to not be so overwhelmed by their sin or not to be so, um, I don't know what the right word is. Like you're, it's just so much easier to be, to be overcome with all this emotion towards your own children that, you know, your niece or your nephew could come over and say, hey, hey Aunt Lisa, I need some advice on this. And you can step back, you know, and say, well, here's what I see. You know, here's some choices and, and this is what I would do. But, you know, and you offer this advice because there's a tiny bit of detachment, right? But with your children, it's like, <gasps> you know, you just stress out and you go into this like one, at one point I had to go to our oldest and say, you know what, I, I have to apologize to you. I think I'm trying to be your Holy Spirit. And she looked at me funny and she says, really? I, I don't know what you're talking about. And I said, yeah, I just am so, I so want you to follow God and, and do all the right things that I'm just like overdoing it. It's like I'm this little voice on her shoulder, like, you know, do this now, Rachel, go this way. And the poor girl is like, you know, she only needs one Holy Spirit, and it's not yeah. me. <laughs> I remember one time, like, she showed me how I was wrong in something, and I just was like, you know what, you're right. And she's like, I am? Like this look <laughs> of, you're admitting you're wrong, and I'm thinking, I always admit I'm wrong. And I start thinking back, I really don't. Um, I always think I'm right. I usually am. <laughs> but it just... You know, there's there's even some practical things that, um, you know, we didn't get too into in the book, but I just heard this two weeks ago and I didn't make it up and uh, I don't know who originated it, but they were talking about in parenting, a lot of times, you know, we let our kids run free because that's just kind of what the world tells you to do is not to discipline them. Don't, don't, don't squash them in any ways. And, and then as they get older, the stakes get higher and you suddenly try to grab control. And they said, it, it just doesn't work that way. It's, it's like starting off like this and letting them run the house. And then later on, you know, trying to grab control, whereas really it should be the opposite of when they're young, really raising them up in the way of the Lord, keeping them close to you. Um, you know, not letting them throw the tantrums and fall on the floor and chew on the rug and cry and scream and cause, you, you know, it's like, no, 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 we're not gonna have that. And then as they grow, you're just slowly releasing, releasing, releasing to the time when they're in high school, it's like, man, because we've trained you up in these early years, it's like, you know what's right or wrong, you can make the decision. And I remember even telling the kids, like, I. I want to get to that point with you where maybe you're 16 and you don't even have to ask anymore. You just tell me where you're going because I trust you. You know, we've had this and, and have slowly, slowly let go. And um, I don't know that I can prove that biblically, but I, it's just a cool little thought. Yeah. You liked it? I agree. Good. <laughs> she agrees. Uh, so this wasn't meant to be like a parenting book uh, by any stretch and giving you all the methods. In fact, even in talking about this, I had said years ago, we will never talk about parenting or do a parenting book or anything like that because you, you don't want that pressure on your kids, like they've gotta be perfect or this or that. Um, and so we're not trying to do that or say that. Um, I guess we're just trying to add another element into parenting, which is helping your kids see that um, mom and dad love each other, we're focused on the kingdom first, um, follow our example as, as we follow Christ, and giving them that type of eternal perspective, um, even when they're little. Um, so don't judge our kids. <laughs> um, <laughs> but all we're saying is, one of the things we try to do well is be in agreement with one another, um, be one so that they understand unity and what it means to um, work together and follow one spirit. Um, we have one king, one kingdom, and, and that that's what we live for, and we're hoping they see that and follow that example. Um, and I don't think it was always that way. I think we. We were so into safety and just 
afraid of so many things. You know, like typical parents, you know, you bring that baby home, it's like, oh, that's not, we're gonna do something wrong. And, and I mean, cause that's terrifying. Um, you, no one taught you how to do this. It's just, once the nurses are gone and you bring this child home, you just immediately go to safety and health and, and, and then sometimes we never grow out of that. Um, and realize, no, it's about eventually releasing them, like training them well and releasing them and letting them grow in their walk with the Lord, mm -hmm. which you would think would be natural for me because, you know, all the deaths of my parents and really just grew up, it was me and God. And yet now that I have kids, I wanna be their savior and protect them from everything rather than recognizing, no, God had his way with me and had to teach me and and I had to grow in my walk with the Lord and I don't want to rob my children of that um, by taking too much control. Yeah, and I think um, it's going to take a conscious effort as a couple for you guys to um, hold your children loosely, to <clears throat> remember who they belong to and like I said in the book, who you belong to because again, everything is about we are all here for God's glory. So if God asks you to release your child in some way that is hard for you or is a struggle for you, you're gonna have to have enough trust in your walk with God and love for God that you're gonna choose Him even over your idea of safety or concern over your children. I guess, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it's very easy to let parenting rule you rather than to let God rule you and to let God rule your children and their lives. And he may have amazing things for them to do. And again, you don't want to stand in the way of what God's going to do in their lives. And so you have to, you have to lay them down at the Lord's feet constantly, I feel like, because that desire to protect them and have them just experience no hardship and no suffering is so strong. We all feel it as parents. I mean, that's, that's the love God gave us for them, but it can very easily overwhelm your whole family life and then you've stood in the way of something that God was about to do through your kids or your own. Yeah, and, and as you were talking, I was thinking about how some of you watching this are like, I don't know, like I said, parenting's humbling and you may just look at yourself and go, gosh, I'm really, failing in this area. My kids are gonna follow my example. I'm not this great example. And I'm just saying, I've seen the Holy Spirit change people, change me, change other parents. Um, and some of you go, gosh, but I have this background and this history of the way my parents treated me. And I'm just saying, no, God can change all of that. He, does, he changes all of that. I mean, I, I never had one conversation with my dad. I never was hugged once by my dad. And it's it's just, he, he God really can be a father to the father, so you have to trust his word. Like, he changes you. That's This is his desire to change you. So don't be overwhelmed. Um, there, there's, there's, you know, don't put so much pressure on yourself, like you're the one that's gonna change your child's heart at the same time focus on your own walk with the Lord. I mean, if you are truly walking with him and growing closer and closer to him, you're gonna become a better parent. You're gonna be a better example to your children. And so don't get so focused on the task as though this is all about, I wanna be a better parent. Man, when you focus on, I wanna become more and more like Christ. I want him to purify me of all the garbage in my life. I want the Holy Spirit to put to death the anger, the pride, the jealousy, all of those things, as you focus on that, you're going to be a better parent. Um, but some people focus so much on the task of being a great dad, being a great mom, that they forget, no, let me just, again, abide in Christ. Let the Holy Spirit change me. And it's going to be caught and uh, understood by the kids.